sorry about that, babe. It had been quite a while since I actually last played a computer game, so I figured, screw it, let's play an old school RPG. And old school I went with Ultimate One, The First Age of Darkness. Originally released for the Apple II in June of 1981, later ported and remade on a variety of home computers, but for the purpose of this review we're going to be focusing on the GOG release of Ultimate One, which was a later released DOS version, and as you could expect, it is powered by DOSBox. In Ultima, you take control of your custom character in the world of Cesaria. The land is divided into four different continents with various kingdoms, towns, landscapes, signposts, and landmarks littered throughout. The evil wizard Mondain has wreaked havoc over the lands of Cesaria by releasing monsters and beasts, and with the aid of his immortality gem, Lord British is now on the search for the special person to bring an end to the diabolical Mondain. And that person... is you. The character creation, especially for the time of the release, is pretty slick. Upon starting, you are given a number of attribute points which you can distribute across various statistics such as strength, agility, stamina, charisma, wisdom, and intelligence. These stats all have different purposes when it comes to the game. For example, strength will increase the damage inflicted upon your enemies, while charisma will give you better deals when bartering with the merchants. Upon stat allocating, you are given the choice to choose between four races, human, elf, dwarf, and bobbit. <laughs> Each race has their own shtick, for example, the human race has higher intelligence, the elf race has better agility, the dwarves have better strength, and the bobbits have higher wisdom while enduring a loss in the strength department. You are then given the option to choose your gender, either male or female, to my knowledge this has no effect on anything in terms of stat difference, or your character's sprite, it's merely kind of like an internal character lore building option thing. Then you get to choose from a list of professions. The fighter class gives you a buff in strength and agility, as well as being able to use virtually every kind of weapon that may be found in Cesaria, according to the manual. The cleric class, which gives you a good deal of wisdom. The wizard class, which adds to your intelligence and has the ability to cast more spells. And the thief class naturally gives you a buff in your agility stat. Lastly, you get to name your character. After creating your heroic character, it's now time to venture into the lands of Cesaria. There are four main category statistics involved during your adventure. Hit points, food, experience points, and coins. HP, or hit points as you could assume is your health, which is built up by fighting enemies in the dungeons and leaving, or giving coin to the lords in the castles. If you run out of HP, you die, and then you respawn with 99 HP, 99 food, and 0 coin. So yeah, I recommend doing a quit out and restart if you die. <laughs> food is essentially your HP in that if you run out, you also die. So keep an eye on that number and be sure to restock in various towns when you can. Food usage goes down when actions and movements are made. Experience points start from zero and cap out at 9,999. For each 1,000 experience points gained, you go up a level, capping out completely at level 10 with the aforementioned 9,999 experience. Lastly, coin or gold is found by killing monsters or opening various chests and coffins within the dungeons. The gist of the game is as follows. Visit the kingdoms, talk to the lords to receive quests, and do those quests. The quests are divided into two categories. One is finding various signposts or landmarks littered throughout the continents, and finding them gives you attribute buffs. By the way, you could also game the system by returning to previously found quest signposts as long as you alternate and you can continue to get stat buffs if you should choose. The other quests revolve around dungeon diving and eliminating specific monsters that exist on certain levels of the dungeons. The dungeons in the game apparently are randomly generated at the start, but will stay the same throughout your playthrough even across various saves. They aren't too bad to navigate, and with the ladder up and ladder down spells, they become actually a breeze to traverse. Uh, those spells basically allow you to either ascend or descend dungeon levels with ease. The dungeon expedition quests are the most important. As for your rewards, you receive one of four gems with each completion, which will eventually allow you to go into... Outer space. Yeah, you heard that right, and I'll get into that more later. There are a variety of weapons, spells, armors, and transportation devices available throughout to purchase to give some level of customization and variety to your journey. Some of these purchases, such as the vacuum suit and space shuttle, are actually required in order to beat the game. Wrapping back around to the space mention from earlier, after you complete your quest in Cesaria and get the four gems, you are then able to travel into outer space to become a quote, space ace. Yes, you leave Cesaria and enter a new realm in both the game and gameplay itself, and eventually you need to shoot down 20 hostile spaceships to get the new moniker. Without getting too much into this section, or anything that follows, as that would completely spoil the ending, let's just say that I found the space section to be a major pain and bore. The game does a complete 180, and becomes not only clunky, but to me just not very fun. It's super easy to die in outer space, whether it's crashing into the sun, running out of fuel, not having enough money to refuel, crashing into your docking stations, and even if you could survive all of that, the act of killing the enemy spaceships will be a snooze fest. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you can't save in outer space either, to my knowledge. Just add that to the annoyance of it all. I applaud them certainly for thinking outside of the box, but in my opinion, the execution is both jarring and lacking. 
It was by far my least favorite section of the game. Luckily, the segments that follow the Space Ace saga are really good and help pick the pace back up. Breaking down Ultima on a technical level, well, there's not much to talk about. The graphics are incredibly primitive, especially compared to some of the later releases where enemies aren't just lines and vectors. However, I do feel that the overworld, towns, kingdoms, and space have that pretty cool 80s DOS aesthetic and I can get behind them. But again, the dungeon exploration can be very jarring, especially to people that aren't used to gaming in this era. From a sound standpoint, yeah, there's not much to talk about here either. You'll be treated to a litany of bleeps and bloops and not much else. On my playthrough, I actually added in 8-bit RPG music as per a pull request, but for the actual playthrough itself on my end, I soaked in all of that silence. The controls are what they are. At times it's stiff, at times it's clunky, and requiring a brief learning curve, especially when it comes to the keybinds, but overall, not too bad. Aside from the space segment, which can seem clunkier than it was back in Cesaria. Now, probably the part that you were waiting for. Is Ultima any good, especially in 2022? My brief answer to that is both yes and no. If you go into the Ultima experience knowing that it's archaic, knowing that it's a bit clunky, and knowing that it's not technologically advanced, you may have a great time. The biggest issue I found was that the learning curve of the keybinds and general mechanics could take an hour or two to get the hang of, but once you do, it's smooth sailing. The combat does leave a bit to be desired, especially within the dungeons. Everything has that old school clunky feel to it, but honestly, once you get rolling with the quests, I find it to be pretty fun. I really enjoyed exploring, dungeon diving, and the conclusion of the game was quite entertaining. Ultima also offers up some decent replay value with the build variety and the overall short nature of the game. My first playthrough took about 7 or 8 hours for reference. However, as stated, the archaic and somewhat shallow nature of the game can be a turnoff for more modern gamers. To be frank, the space section was dumb. For me, it killed the pacing and it was just a chore. I would have preferred maybe a few more quests, or perhaps some kind of quest variation while in space, perhaps to another planet, the moon, or whatever, not sluggishly navigating various spacecrafts and turning this RPG into a space shooter for 45 minutes. All things considered, I give Ultima 1 The First Age of Darkness on GOG slash DOS a 6 out of 10. Despite the technical limitations and dreadful space section, it was still fun diving back to the origins of a series, and I feel like in order to appreciate a game series on a deeper level, you should always play every game in it at least once. Ultima didn't blow me away by any means, and there are many better RPGs to be played, but given its short length and being, you know, the first of its kind, also sporting a cheap price, as of the time of this recording, Ultima 1, 2, and 3 is actually uh, on sale for like super duper cheap, I think it's like less than 2 bucks right now on GOG. So with all that being said, I say give it a go, but don't get me wrong, if you choose to skip this one, <laughs> I don't blame you. If you've enjoyed this review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing if you haven't already. I do my best to reply to all comments in all videos, I'll see you guys in the next review. Take care.